What's up, gentlemen? This is Rising Phoenix Podcast, the podcast about how to rise up after your divorce. I'm your host, Michael Rhodes. Let's get into it. Joining me today is John. Uh, John, why don't we just jump right into it? Why don't you just tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I am John Sanmez. I run a company called Bulldog Mindset, where I teach men uh, personal development, basically how to get rid of the victim mindset and to develop their masculinity. Uh, I started out as a software developer, actually, and I did that for about 15 years. I was kind of the, the typical computer nerdy type of guy and very shy, very lazy, you know, not very physically fit. And, you know, I turned my life around through personal development and really transformed who I was and then went on to start building businesses and writing books and running marathons and doing all kinds of stuff. And so that's what really got me into the idea of helping other men, uh, because I knew that if I could transform, if I could become successful in these areas of my life, that uh, that I could help other guys to do it. So, yeah, so that's my story. Awesome. So, so let's jump into uh, the topic at hand, which is self-esteem. Uh, let's define it. What? How do you define self-esteem? Yeah, I mean, in simple terms, self-esteem is how you view yourself, like how you truly view yourself, not what you tell yourself, not what you tell other people, but it's kind of like what Dr. Maxwell Maltz uh, would say in, uh, in his book, Psycho-Cybernetics, is, is the, the, the true thing that subconsciously you believe about yourself, which you also cannot escape because you cannot rise above that level or you can't be below that level. Whatever you believe about yourself subconsciously truly is, is, is what you will be. Hmm. And, and that, that rabbit holes happen all the time. So uh, forgive me, but how do you make... I, I, do you, do you think guys know ultimately where they're at? Cause, cause you mentioned, you know, where you're at subconsciously or do, do you, do they have to dig in? Do they have to, to bring the, the, the subconscious to the surface in order to really know where they're at? Or do you think guys generally know, like, I don't feel very good about myself. Yeah. I mean, I think guys generally know, I, I think where, where they have to do some work to figure this out is when they get into situations, like they think that, everything always happens to them. Why does it always happen to me? Right. Kind of this victim mindset thinking that they're just unlucky. And what it is, is they have a deep rooted subconscious belief. That they don't deserve good things. They don't deserve that. They're not capable of achieving this thing. So their, their brain works to make sure that they stay at the level of exactly what it evaluates them, what they truly believe about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. And so, so how do you, what, what's the, what's the answer? What are the things that you recommend that guys do to start raising that level of self-esteem? Yeah. So I, I really try to focus on identity. I feel like identity is the most powerful force in the universe. Right. And, and it's, it's sort of the same thing. Like it's, it's who, who do we identify as? What is the identity that we hold? I, I would, I would call that our, our self image, our self-esteem comes from, from that. And so like self-esteem is, 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 is more of that second layer, right? So identity is like who, who we are, who we truly believe we are. Maybe that self-image that we we're talking about, but self-esteem is what we feel about it. Right. right. And so the only way to control what we feel about it is to actually change that identity. And so, you know, you always act from your nature, like you, you act what you are. Right. Yeah. So it's it, a lot of guys, they try to change habits, right. You know, one of the big ones, like, uh, you know, addictions like porn addiction and, and, you know, drugs, alcohol, uh, video games, all, all these, these type of addictions. And it's, it's like this rubber band. What happens is that you, you use your willpower. You try to stop something, stop, stop, stop. And you can do it for a while, but then that rubber band eventually snaps and it snaps back the other way and you binge. Right. And the reason why is because you're trying to do something that is against your nature, your identity. Whereas the, the way to really change, the, the way to really you know, build the self-esteem and change is to change this identity. And the way that you do that is, is really two ways. One of them is the environment that you're in, right? So uh, you are what you pickle in. If you put a cucumber in pickle juice, it will become a pickle, right? And so when we look at guys today in the environment they're in, most guys are in an unhealthy environment. In fact, they might've gotten out of an unhealthy environment when they're in a relationship where they were abused or not treated properly or given respect and, and, and these things that, that would build their self-esteem and their identity. So the, the first step is to look at the environment and say, okay, what am I consuming? 
what, what am I reading? What am I watching on TV? What am I watching on YouTube? What people am I hanging around, right? Who are my friends? Who are the, because that is going to determine who you are. That's the brine that you're pickling in, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to change your identity and you want to have a high self-esteem, start hanging around people who are successful, who are like you, who, who like the person you want to become. Uh, start reading that, those books, start consuming that content, you know, become that, you know, that, that's how you change the identity. And then the second way that you change the identity is through actions, acting as if you're already the identity you want to be, right? Because when you start doing something that someone who had that identity would do, you will actually become that, right? So for example, I, I'm, I'm a pretty big guy around 230 pounds, you know, six foot. I don't, I'm not exactly a distance runner, but I've run marathons and I ran an ultra marathon, a 50 mile race. And the way I did it was I just woke up one morning and I started saying, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to change my identity to be a distance runner, even though it's not the thing that genetically that I'm, I'm built to do. And I just started running and I started running as if I was a distance runner and setting up a schedule, even though I was slow, even though I was not. And eventually what ended up happening was I became a person who ran six marathons and ran an ultra marathon because, and that became my identity. I believe that because I did it. So, uh, so when you do those two things and you change your identity, then what's going to follow is the self-esteem because now you'll look at yourself and you'll say, look, this is who I am. I'm doing these things. I'm proud of that person. That gives me a high esteem for myself. I believe that I'm actually an awesome guy because there's evidence of it, right? When we don't have evidence of it, we can't believe it. And so that will raise the self-esteem. So it starts with identity. You change the identity, which causes your actions to now be in line with uh, someone that you would actually be proud of. And now you've built your self-esteem. Yeah. So I think, you know, step one is, is, I mean, like you, like you said, but I think even sort of pre that is, um, sort of finding those models in, in terms of like, okay, I want to be like, everybody loves David Goggins. Right. But, mm, but, right. but maybe you don't want to be David Goggins. Maybe there's some dude that, it, you know, maybe there's just that one aspect of your, of yourself that you want to change or whatever. And there's someone else that does that thing better. So it, it's kind of, that's sort of the pre is figuring out what is it that I don't necessarily like. Right. And then what, and then who has what I do, I think, is that, exactly. is that, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, I, uh, in my, in my Bulldog uh, Mindset membership, we've got this exercise that I have the guys go through. It's called the looking in the mirror exercise. Mm -hmm. And it, you basically stand in a mirror completely naked mm -hmm. and, and you, you don't judge, you observe like physically everything, first of all, and you kind of write it down like, okay, what, what, what parts of you don't you like, right? Are you too fat? Are you, you know, good and bad? You know what I mean? Okay. I got good shoulders. All right. My nose is too big, whatever. Like you're just making right. a list. Right. right. Uh, and then you do the same thing uh, emotionally, right? You catalog your character. You say, okay, am I, am I afraid? I'm afraid to talk to women. Okay. That's fine. That's what it is. Right. I'm afraid of these things. All right. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a reliable guy. Like I'm, you know, I'm a little bit too of an, much of a nice guy. I let people take advantage of me. I'm afraid, you know, whatever you make the whole list of everything. And then you go through this list and you say for each thing, first you prioritize them. You say, which things, if I changed about myself would have the biggest impact on my life that would get me to where I want to be more, more closer. And then for each one of those things that you prioritize, you look through it and you say, okay, is it something that I can change or accept? And those are the only two choices because you either have to change it or you have to accept it. Like, for example, if you're too short, you're not changing that, right? Yeah. But the path to building your self-esteem and growing as a person is to finally accept that. Because as long as you're in denial and you're fighting it and you're judging yourself against something that you can't control and you can't change, you, you're, you're going to feel crappy about yourself. Yeah. But once you embrace and accept things, then it frees you from them. So, and then it gives you some action. Now you can do some things. Now you can make that list. Just like you're saying, now you can come up with that guy that you want to be Right. saying, okay, well, these are the simple things that I, I need to change if I work on these things. And how can I come up with a plan to fix these things or to change these things around and be and start evolving into that guy that I, I want. And then you can do that assessment, you know, once a year and say, okay, now where am I at now? Now what things, you know, it's, it's the way to make progress forward. And you can feel good about it because you know 
that you're going the direction you want to go. You're becoming the man that you want to be. And that's going to give you a, a good view of yourself. Yeah. Uh, it, it, what, what sort of time frame? you know, you mentioned a year in, in, in terms of being able to look back, but what other, if you're really trying to make a, a specific change to, to, to up your self-esteem, what is a good snapshot to, to kind of look at? Like, in, you know, in 90 days, I want to be this in 120 days and six months, whatever it is, what's, what's your uh, sort of uh, that, that sort of narrow snapshot that, that you have guys look at? Yeah. So what, I mean, I look at it longer, right? So, because to me, commitment is the most important thing, right? So what I always say is that I have this five-year rule, right? Anything that you want to become, achieve major success in, it takes five years, right? So let's say that you want to become financially successful. You need to commit to something like a business for five years. If you commit to building a business for five years, there's no guarantee, but that, that it's, it's, as close as a guarantee as possible, right? right? If you commit to to fixing your body, to getting in shape for five years, in five years, you could be there. You could be a, a, a very a different person to, to becoming good with women, five years. Whatever it is, five years is sort of that, that commitment level because your whole entire life could change in five years, right? And, and the problem that I, that I find is that most guys, they just don't commit, they, they try something out. They're like, okay, well, I'll try this out for 90 days or whatever it is. And yeah, you can make some changes and advancements in 90 days. But the problem is, is that if you have the mindset of you're just trying it out and you're just thinking in 90 days, you're not committing to the long term, you're not actually even going to make it 90 days. So that's why when you put it in your head and you say, okay, I'm committing to five years, right, of, of these things, that's where you actually make the changes because that's when you truly believe it. Because the biggest factor in making change is truly believing it. And, and, and that's, that's it's difficult for us to do. Most people say they're going to do something, but they really in their head think, I'm going to try and see if this works. Instead of, I must do this, this must happen, this will happen, I'm committing to it. Yeah, it's almost uh, simple, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I mean the, 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 the mechanism, right? You, you, you commit to something and you do it. It's, 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 it sounds in, 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 in theory is it's very, very simple. Um, what are some of the things that you got, see guys stumble with, uh, like through, through their process, like, uh, quitting or like, what are some of the things that you see that you have to coach men to sort of, um, get through in order to continue on? Yeah. I mean, it, just right on the topic, we we're just talking about the biggest one is commitment for sure. Yeah. Right. Because, I have a lot of coaching clients that, and, and about half of my coaching clients, they, they follow through and they get things done, but the other half of them, it doesn't matter what I tell them. They're never going to get anywhere because they're not going to do it. Right. I, you know, I, I tell them, put it on your calendar, right? Okay. So if we're going to do workouts now, then put them on your calendar, right? If you're going to make YouTube videos and you're going to do three videos a week, put it on your calendar, right? What day are you going to do it? What time block, put it on there and commit to that thing, right? If you can't commit to that, simple step. You're never going to make the, the progress that, that you want to make. Um, I think the other thing that I see a lot is guys that have really, really big ambitions and they, they're just biting off too much, right. Without building trust in themselves first. And, and these kind of things are kind of related because you have to have trust in yourself. Most of us have eroded the trust in ourselves, right. And you can tell this by I, a lot of times when I get a new coaching client, I'll say, okay, pull up your iPhone, right? And pull up the alarms and, I, and let me see the alarms page. And it's like, uh, you know, 6 a.m., 6 10, 6 20, 6 30. I'm like, why do you have, why do you have 15 alarms? Uh, oh, so I, I get up. So, so you turn them all. So you like turn them off. You don't get up when your first alarm goes off. I was like, why is that? Uh, it's, it's like you don't have faith. You don't trust yourself. So you make a commitment just for tomorrow morning about what time you're going to wake up. And you're already lying to yourself. Like you don't believe yourself. You don't trust yourself that when you say you're going to get up at this time, I was like, how else are you going to, how are you going to do the rest of the day? How the heck are you getting to the gym? How the heck are you starting this business that you're supposed to be working on? How are you going to like go out to, and, and start, uh, start your talking to women uh, plan that you're afraid to do. Like, you're not going to do any of these things if you can't even get up in the morning when you say, so you don't trust yourself. So yeah. what you have to do is you have to build this trust in yourself with small steps, right? So that you know that if you say you're going to do something to yourself, that you're going to do it. And so it starts with 
the simple thing of the alarm. Okay. I, you know, everyone listening right now, if you have multiple alarms, you need to delete them. You have one alarm, you set that alarm. And when that alarm goes off, you get up. If you can't do that simple step, then you're never going to have enough trust in yourself to do bigger things. Right. And, and that's what it comes down to is because when we commit to things, when we put on our calendar and we say, okay, I'm going to run a marathon this year. Do you really trust yourself? If, if you don't, if you can't even wake up, then you don't trust you. You just know that you're going to try to run a marathon. Right. But you need to be at the level of when you say you're going to do something like if you say, I'm going to run a marathon today, you go and you buy the tickets for it. You go and you, you get a, a, a 16 week training program and you put all the dates on your calendar of exactly what runs you're supposed to run. That's when I know you mean it. And that's when you're actually going to get results. But if you're not at that level, it's fine. You have to build yourself to the level by taking small steps and never lie to yourself because we've all lied to ourselves, but we have to reset that trust. And then once we reset that trust, then we can count on, you know, whatever we say in our mind that we're going to do. And that's really, when we, you know, it's really freedom, right? And when I define freedom, freedom in my mind is your ability to uh, exert your will upon the world, right? And so if you cannot do what you think in your head, if you can't make your body do what the thought, then you are a prisoner in your own body. You're just watching the movie of your life. You're a pinball in a pinball machine being knocked all around. And whatever happens to you in life, it's just random chance because you didn't have influence or control over it. You just were sitting along for the ride because if your thoughts do not result in your actions and changes in your life, then, then that's what it is. You're not in control. You're not sovereign in your life. So let's, um, I, I like to recap these things and, and, um, you know, the, the guys know this is, this is going to be part of a new podcast series. This is fixing our flaws. And so this one's going to be a bit shorter. So I want to recap, uh, sort of what we talked about in terms of steps. If I'm a guy and I'm listening, I'm like, okay, great. I am pumped. What do I do now? What did he say again? So step one is sort of identify, uh, what it is you want to change and, and who you want to model. Right. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. And then step two is, is, um, you know, essentially work towards that, uh, and, and change your identity by accomplishing these things. Is that, is that, uh, yeah. kind of where we're at? Yeah. I would say, uh, kind of part of step two is, is change your environment first uh, okay, and, and then, and take the actions of the, of the, the person, right. Act as if you're already the person you want to be. Gotcha. Right? So, yeah. Okay. Well, John, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for doing this. I know this is quick, but uh, I, there is one more question, one final question I, I, I ask everybody, uh, and and that is, uh, what are some words of wisdom you would impart to a man who's just starting this process, his divorce process? He just got papers, he just got left, whatever the case is. What are some words of wisdom you would impart to that man? Yeah, I mean, I would I would say that the the most important thing is for you to to not to, to let go of trying to control situations to accept whatever is is happening like to just practice acceptance like you know there, there's so many things in life that you can't control just accept first practice acceptance and then once you have accepted and you're willing to accept whatever outcome comes right like you, you have to kind of view these paths in life and say okay well there's there's multiple paths that that could happen right you know and whatever happens you have to have a plan for it and how it will work to your best and really believe that because in life you either win or you learn and either route is good. Now, some routes are more painful, but whatever you're going through in life, you can use that as a positive experience in order to improve yourself. There's something that was wrong. There's something that, that you needed to learn in this cycle of life right now that has caused you to get to this point. And it's not your fault. It's not your fault that you didn't know the things that you that you you are going to learn now, but you will learn them by acceptance. And so accept what's what's happening, work towards whatever future that you want, but be willing to accept whatever path that that life takes you down, because there is a lot that you don't have control over. And, and ultimately, any path can become a good path for you because it, it will result in your growth in, in some way. You're either going to win or you're going to learn. Uh, amen. I, I I couldn't agree more. It's a it's an excellent way to look at it. It's sometimes difficult, uh, especially in the very beginning, to get to that state of mind. But that is essentially where you need to get. Is that this is where I'm at? What do I do now? Not you know, you know what what didn't I do then? What why? And all these questions that sort of linger, uh, that can linger 
um, and but quickly disappear once you decide that it's time to accept it as is and just start moving forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, John, th thank you again. I really, really appreciate this. We will do it again. We'll do a longer version, a uh, more expanded version. Um, how can people find you? What's the best way to get in touch with you? Yeah, best thing to do is go to bulldogmindset.com. There'll be a little pop up there for a quiz that will tell your bulldog score from zero to 100. 10 quick questions there. And then from there, you know, I'll give you your score, tell you how to improve your score. And we talked about improving yourself and, and some tips around that, some videos and stuff like that. So just go to bulldogmindset.com. Awesome. John, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Glad, right. glad to be here. Thank you so much for watching and or listening. Thank you to Nick Coyle and Lifer for allowing me to use their song, Born Again, which you're hearing now and at the intro to the podcast. Thank you to Justin Dillahanty and all of my brothers at The Alpha Code. Please visit the website, risingphoenixpodcast.com, to connect with me and other like-minded men who are looking to thrive and grow after their divorce. And remember to surround yourself with people who add value to your life, who challenge you to be greater than you were yesterday, who sprinkle magic into your existence like you do to theirs. Life is not meant to be done alone. Find your tribe. Take care.